This is an extraordinarily special place. The only place I ever really feel at home. Uh, that's coming from a nomad that uh, doesn't feel like he lives anywhere. Well, last night was a chilly night, but it felt a little more chilly and a little more drafty in here than I thought it really should. Apparently there was a good reason for that. Take a look at this. So my door is not latched. Now it looks like it is. I can push on it here. See, and it's, it's closed. It doesn't pop open. But if you look down at the uh, bottom there, you see the seal is not uh, tight up against the body of the van. So if you look a little closer too, you can see that there's some light coming in. Well, maybe you can't see it now. Uh, oh, there's some up there. Yeah, so this door was not completely latched shut last night. So on a positive note, I do like to have lots of fresh air moving through the vans, and I had plenty of that last night, although uh, it was a bit of a chilly night. Well, it's been raining here the last few weeks and the last couple of days has been especially rainy where I'm at. Uh, I have been hanging out in Petaluma uh, just north of San Francisco, downtown San Francisco. And Petaluma's uh, a nice quieter town than San Francisco was if you've been watching my uh, travels here lately and saw uh, that I was in San Francisco for a day, part of a day. Uh, it was quite tiring, and I wanted to be in a place that was uh, not quite as go-go and, um, yeah, maybe just a little more relaxed. Uh, Petaluma definitely fit the bill. Okay, so I gotta go latch the back door, make sure that that's firmly latched shut. But before I get out of the van, uh, I need to put a lid on. My hair is uh, extra long. So I don't want to look at it, uh, for one, but two, it's still going to be chilly today. Uh, I think it's supposed to be uh, in the low 50s today, uh, but hopefully sunshine all day long. I'm not really sure, um, but because it's going to be so cold, I need to have something to keep me a little bit warmer. So which one do I go with? Do I go with the old standby or should I go with the warmer one? I think I'm going to go with this one. It's warmer and it's uh, slightly more comfortable, I think. I just wish I had this one in a more gray color like this one is, because it, this one, because it's all black, it, yeah, see, it shows up uh, all these little bits of uh, fuzz and lint. Well, I'm not gonna worry about that, because this is the, this is the best one for today. Okay, there we go, cover up that hair. I really need a haircut one of these days. Let's get that door shut and get on the road. I think that got it. This was a terrific neighborhood to park in last night. I'm just in a residential neighborhood. Uh, there is a park right next to me here. So I was a little worried that I was gonna get woken up uh, early. I kind of wanted to sleep in a little bit. Um, it's just after nine o'clock this morning. Um, Long drives are kind of difficult for me anymore, so uh, I usually like to get a really good night's sleep. And so that's why I searched out a quiet neighborhood, a quiet place to be, and this turned out to be really good. Although I did uh, get woken up by the trash trucks uh, picking up garbage this morning, which that seems to happen more than you might uh, think. Uh, either trash trucks go by or gardeners wake me up quite often. Uh, just the hazards of uh, parking in a random neighborhood, I guess. So I'm pretty excited about this drive here today. Uh, normally when I drive through California here, I stay right on Route 1. And the only reason I have not this time was when I headed south back uh, in January, uh, just a few months back, um, I had a bit of a rough go through uh, a part of Route 1 that I decided I wanted to just avoid this time. So the area around Jenner, uh, California, uh, Route 1 gets really twisty and curvy, and there's spots uh, just north of Jenner where the road is kind of deteriorated away. Uh, in fact, um, the white line has been eroded away, so there's spots on the road where you kind of have to hug the 
middle of the road uh, to stay away from the edge and it's a pretty sheer drop off uh, to, uh, to the coast uh, in some cases a few hundred feet up uh, from the water. So it was a really fun drive and a really beautiful drive but I kind of just decided since I just did it recently I really didn't want to do it again although I think going north would be a little easier because you're on the mountain side and so you you don't have that cliff side to deal with and I also think it'd probably be a prettier drive uh, going north as well uh, just the views and all but since I just did the drive uh, pretty pretty recently I just decided to skip it and take a new route uh, gonna take uh, route 128 and it's a route I've never driven before so it'll be fun just to experience something new this time uh, from what I've heard it's a pretty drive but um, that's all I know about it so this will be, uh, be a fun day It's time for me to stop and make some breakfast, a uh, late breakfast, but um, I need to get something. So I've stopped here at the uh, Mendocino Fairgrounds parking lot, figured this is a fine place to stop at. Uh, we have obviously left the 101 freeway, we're now on the 128 West, and this will eventually take us down to Route 1. We've got a little ways to go yet for that, but uh, this has been just an awesomely great drive. It's just been fantastically beautiful. Uh, it did get a little bit uh, steep and twisty for a little ways there, uh, so I had to keep pulling off and letting people uh, pass me. Uh, most people wanted to just zoom on through, but I really like to take my time, especially on a road that uh, is new to me. Surprisingly, I have not seen much traffic. Uh, just a few cars here and there. I uh, did see some logging trucks go by, but uh, yeah, not, not a lot of traffic and that's been a little bit surprising to me. Anyway, here we are, little town of Boonville. Uh, figure this is a good place just to uh, get a little rest and make a little bit of breakfast. Um, but I think first coffee. Well, I made a quick and easy uh, egg and cheese burrito, kind of simple, but uh, I did add a nice healthy dose of uh, yellow bird. I uh, used the yellow bird jalapeno this time. Very tasty. Um, anyway, as I was sitting here enjoying my burrito, I was looking out over here and I see some water spigots, and that has me thinking about something. Quite often people tell me I should get a key to access water spigots that don't have a handle on them. Now these water spigots have handles on them, to me, if a water spigot has a handle on it, that means that uh, whoever owns the rights to that water spigot or to the water that is flowing out of that water spigot is basically saying they uh, are inviting you to have access to that water. But if somebody has a spigot that doesn't have a handle on it, that you would need a key to uh, turn on that faucet, in my opinion, that is basically like somebody saying, uh, this is a lock on this water spigot. We don't want you to use it. That's kind of my thinking on it. So uh, I, I have not bought a water key uh, to access spigots that are uh, locked off that way. Uh, but if there is a spigot that has a handle, a working handle on it, 
I will definitely use that. This is an invitation as far as I'm concerned. So this is my backup water jug. I have not been keeping this one filled up lately uh, because I've been in cities that I've had plenty of uh, water around to get. So just for weight saving and all, I've just not been keeping this one filled up. But I'm feeling like it's a good time to go ahead and fill this one up. Especially because of this in nice invitation here. Water seems nice and clean and fresh too. So the cool thing about this jug is that it sits very nicely here in the passenger footwell and uh, stays out of the way. Uh, I did just remember why another reason why I hadn't filled this up before and that's because it sloshes around a little bit when I drive but uh, also I've been around plenty of water sources lately so that's why I haven't been keeping it filled up but it is nice to have and it fits so nice down in here it really is a great jug for this spot now I really don't like keeping stuff in the footwell here and for years I wouldn't keep anything at all up here but I've just kind of needed the space. To me, it's better to have something in the footwell here, like water, uh, than to not have it at all. So that's why I've kind of changed my mind on this over the years. Um, and then because the water tank is up here, I've been keeping like a backup roll of uh, paper towel. I've got some flour there for making tortillas and pizza. Um, that was something I never wanted to do uh, at first, but um, you know, you kind of, your priorities change as you uh, kind of think things out. And uh, that's one of the things that uh, has been a change for me. Now, the one problem with keeping stuff in the footwell is every once in a while, I have to give a friend or family member a ride somewhere, and then I've got to take it out of the front and put it in the back here temporarily. Uh, of course, I can't deal with it in the back because I've just got no, uh, room for anything extra here um, so that means I have to shuffle it back and forth whenever I give somebody a ride uh, so a little downside with keeping stuff uh, up front plus I really don't like having stuff visible uh, up front at all I'd rather it just be empty and open up here um, yeah again there just one of those things I've had to change my mind on Okay, so I went and got a little bit more water and filled up my Berkey because I uh, might as well take advantage of the free water while I've got it. And the water smells really good. There's no chlorine in it that I can smell. Uh, so I'm quite excited about that. I'll be pretty nice. Probably don't even really need to uh, put it through my Berkey from the looks of it. Um, but uh, I've also got some potato chips so I have something to snack on since I really didn't eat much um, for breakfast. And I've got the most important thing, got road coffee. So we are ready to hit the road, but we've got about 50 miles to go, I think. So uh, back on the road now. I pulled over just for a quick second. This is the famous Scharfenberger estate. Uh, if you know wine, I guess Scharfenberger is uh, big news. I'm not a wine drinker, so uh, being in wine country is not uh, maybe as, as ex exciting as it could be for me, but uh, boy, it sure is beautiful out here. Uh, I knew this drive was going to be pretty, but this is beyond what I was expecting. This is just phenomenal. This almost feels like uh, the Avenue of the Giants, which is a bit north of here, has a little bit of that same feel with these big, huge redwood trees that you're just snaking around between. It's actually too chilly to be driving with the window down, but I've got the window down just to get a little bit of this uh, redwood air in. Oh man, this is incredible. I, I, I'm just absolutely so delighted with this drive here. This is just beyond anything that I was anticipating. Well, that may be my favorite drive I've ever taken. That route, 128 West, was just beautiful all the way through. Uh, 
very different all the way through. There was uh, spots that were just wineries. Uh, there were spots where you're driving across creeks and rivers uh, or next to them. Um, there was some very hilly areas, uh, but absolutely just gorgeous the whole way through. But I need a little break from driving, so we are now at Van Damme State Park. And uh, yeah, this is a good place to just get out, stretch your legs for a little bit. Really pretty here too. So with all that coffee, you know, I want to check out the restroom before I get too far. Uh, the restrooms here are pretty good, although uh, they are basically just pit toilets. So Van Damme State Park here is uh, one of the premier state parks here in uh, California. Uh, there are a few very similar to uh, Van Damme here, um, but yeah, this, uh, this park is very, very nice. Uh, I've actually done some hiking here. The last time I was in town, I did a little hike through the park, uh, but I've never actually stayed here. Uh, camping in a park is not really my thing. This is such a beautiful beach here. Uh, if you've got kids and, you know, maybe pets, uh, this would be a great beach to stop at. Um, because it's a little cove here, uh, of course, it's a little more protected and you can actually get in the water and swim. Now, this is the Pacific Northwest, so the water is not really going to get very warm, but uh, it actually gets swimmable. Uh, and this spot's cool because uh, there's some showers here at this parking lot so you can clean up easily after you're done. Uh, and then of course there is the premier campground just across the road. So uh, pretty, pretty nice spots here. But this is not where I uh, was heading to. We've got just a couple miles farther to go. Let's get back on Pacific Coast Highway and finish off our trip. This is an extraordinarily special place. This is my favorite place I've ever been. Uh, it's the most beautiful place I've ever seen. And it's probably the only place I ever really feel at home. Uh, that's coming from a nomad that uh, doesn't feel like he lives anywhere. This is the one place that almost feels like home. This place is special. This is Mendocino. So this area that we're at right now is a state preserve. It's called the Mendocino Headlands, and it surrounds the little town here of Mendocino. So you see the downtown uh, Mendocino right behind me. That's pretty much it. Uh, there's basically two main streets on Mendocino. Well, three, I guess, if you are really counting them all. Uh, not a very big town, and the cool thing about this area is the whole town is surrounded by the state preserve. Uh, makes it just absolutely beautiful and peaceful out here. So this side of the Mendocino Headlands is pretty steep, uh, cliffs all around. There are a couple of ways down to the water down below, but um, it's mostly big, huge cliffs. But that makes for some pretty dramatic scenery, uh, although probably shouldn't be too afraid of heights. Like this spot here is one that uh, I can't always get right up near the edge of. Uh, it's kind of cool. I've never been able to walk up to the edge of it like I have today, but uh, look at this drop and look at that down below. It's just so gorgeous here. The very first time I came here to Mendocino, 
I could not get anywhere near an edge of anywhere here. I pretty much stayed in the center of this little outcropping. Uh, it was really cool and I enjoyed it, but anytime I got near the edge, my brain would just tell me, no, ain't happening. Uh, so, <laughs> now that I'm feeling much better, I'm taking the opportunity to get right up to the edge of the cliff here and get a good look down. Wow, this is just so awesome. I don't know if you're able to see that, but there's my van across the way straight ahead. That's actually Main Street, Main Street Mendocino. I'm parked on, parked right at the edge of the cliff there. Pretty awesome. Uh, and really another cool thing about Mendocino is this whole area is awesome here, the Mendocino headlands, but there's actually another nature preserve just across the way and if you look straight out there, that is Route 1, that bridge there, you can see the cars going across. Just the other side of that is a whole other uh, state preserve uh, called Big River. And uh, that's another great spot. And it's just outside of town, as you can see. So just a lot of uh, fantastic, fantastic scenery in this area. Having two state preserves that are just so close to town here makes this the special place to me that uh, that's why I like it so much here. Uh, there's a lot to do, there's a lot to see. If you like to walk and hike like I do, uh, this just gives you so many opportunities to do that. You can walk along here on the headlands uh, and look out at the ocean, or you can walk over in the Big River area uh, up the river and through some uh, hills and wooded areas, and uh, that's just as equally fantastic as this, uh, although very different, but really cool to have both of those things so close together and so close to uh, downtown. Now, when I'm saying that this is my favorite place and uh, the place I feel most at home, I don't mean to say that Mendocino is perfect. Uh, there's no perfect place. And there are some issues with Mendocino here. Uh, it is a tiny town, which means there's not a lot of options for food. Uh, so food's a little bit expensive. Uh, there are a number of great restaurants and great coffee shops here. Uh, there's not a bad restaurant in town, uh, from what I've been told. I have sampled some coffee from some of the places here in town, and uh, that certainly holds true with the coffee shops. There's no bad coffee here in town. Uh, so I can uh, attest to that. But um, yeah, food's a little bit expensive. Uh, people talk about gas being expensive. Uh, it's, it's outrageously expensive here, but uh, it's really a non-issue because we're right near Fort Bragg. Fort Bragg's just uh, maybe six miles away, and you can get gas for less than half the price there as uh, you can get here in Mendocino. So to me, it's not an issue. It's not something to think about. And I mean, the weather is pretty good here, but uh, we are in the Pacific Northwest, so it does get a little cold here, it does get a little dark and rainy at times, uh, but it could be a lot worse. Uh, the weather's pretty nice here most of the year, I think, uh, and the first time I was here was in the summertime. Uh, I came here to escape heat on the other side of the state, on the eastern side of the state. I'd been spending some time uh, over there and uh, in Nevada, and it was about 40 degrees cooler here than it was on the east side of California and in Nevada. So uh, there's, you know, there's some drawbacks here, but there's certainly a lot of positives too. I think the biggest negative for me though is whenever I get here, I just don't want to ever leave. Uh, if I could stay here year-round and never actually leave this place, I would just be so happy. So I enjoyed a little bit of time that I can be here, and I plan on being here as long as I possibly can, but it's never long enough.
So I just walked down to a uh, local shipping center here. It's a uh, authorized FedEx and UPS shipper. Very nice place um, called Mendo Pack and Ship. And I was telling her that I'm a van lifer and I'm always on the move. And she said, oh, we're quite used to that. So she, and she pointed out some boxes over in the corner. She said, all of those are uh, van life people and just waiting for them to uh, come and pick them up. So uh, they're used to us here, uh, used to us nomads here. Now, if you're like me and you don't really want to eat out, but you do want to stock up on food, you don't have to uh, leave Mendocino. Uh, here on our right is a uh, very nice little health food store. Uh, it's small and they have a limited selection, but uh, it's actually a very good selection. And then just a few blocks away, uh, up and to our left uh, is a little market called Mendoza's Market and well again it's a small market uh, they're very well stocked and they have pretty much anything that you would need so once you're here and if you need something you can pretty much get whatever you need so earlier we were walking down Main Street we just walked down Ukiah and now this is Lansing and this is uh, the third and uh, probably biggest most uh, populated street for uh, stores and things. There are some smaller streets, side streets too, but this is kind of most of downtown here. And we're coming up on a coffee shop that I really like, so let's stop in and see if they're still open and I'll get a cup of coffee. Oh, uh, it's my luck they're not open. I thought they had really long hours, but uh, not open now, are they? Oh well, maybe we'll go home and make a cup. So that's just a real quick look at a little bit of around town. Uh, even though Mendocino is a pretty small town, there is a lot more to see, but um, I have a feeling I'll be around here for quite some time, so we've got plenty of time to uh, check out the other sites. So we're just on the other side of town. Downtown's right behind us here, and uh, this is still considered the Mendocino Headlands, as I was talking about before. This is the part that kind of wraps around the other side of Mendocino. And uh, let's just go take a little look at why I wanted to be over here. The view, the view here is pretty spectacular. views out here are just amazing and this spot uh, has a couple of ways that you can get down to the water uh, there's not a lot of sand you can get to but you can definitely get down near the water uh, but we have to do that later because I need to eat something I uh, just realized I hardly ate those uh, potato chips I got out to snack on I was just so enthralled with the drive over here that uh, I forgot to uh, eat or snack or anything I think this is a good spot. Opened up the back door so I have a nice view out the back. Closed the side door because uh, somebody's playing music next to me. So I just want to hear the waves. And I know I said I was going to make coffee, but um, in light of the fact that I haven't had a whole lot to eat today, I better get a little lunch going. And I do have some leftover burrito stuff, of course, because it's what I eat almost every day. So I'm just going to whip together a nice little burrito. All right, I had some leftover ground beef and pinto beans and added a little bit of uh, some Wajillo salsa from Trader Joe's. I've got some uh, cheddar cheese in there and I'm gonna hit it with some uh, sour cream here. Might as well go decadent, right? And even though I've got the Wajillo salsa, I'm gonna come in and just top it with a little bit of my favorite, the Yellowbird Serrano. Probably not necessary, but this is a lot spicier than that Wajillo salsa, so uh, I'll enjoy this. So I want a little bit of extra spice, right? Oh yeah. Uh, I am absolutely exhausted. That drive really took something out of me. Uh, I've just been sitting here after I ate my burrito, uh, I've just been sitting doing nothing. I didn't even make coffee. I just uh, have been lazing around here. I have had a nice view. Uh, the only problem with this 
view though is I can't hear the ocean uh, and the waves. So I guess we should probably force ourselves to get up, take a little walk out there and see if we can get uh, a view of the water and hear the ocean waves a little bit. So uh, I'm getting up, I'm, I'm doing it, I'm, I'm going. Wait, let's have a cookie first. Yeah, sugar will get us going, right? And if you're going to tell me just uh, make some coffee, uh, I will remind you, or maybe you don't know this, uh, caffeine has no effect whatsoever on me. I just drink coffee because I like the taste of it. Uh, but yeah, I don't get any, any effect of caffeine whatsoever. So uh, coffee's not going to help. In fact, the thing that I do to fall asleep you, this, this, you're, you're gonna love this. Whenever I need to fall asleep quickly, I make a cup of coffee, drink it, get into bed, and I am out like a light and sleep like a baby. So uh, maybe coffee is not the thing I need to be making right now because I will uh, probably fall asleep right here and get woken up by the ranger as they come around and do their rounds uh, at, uh, at sunset. So that, that may not be a good idea. Let's see if the cookie helps. We'll eat a cookie and then we'll go go for a walk. Just one cookie. So my favorite spot is back behind us here. But before we go that way, uh, I just want to go over across the parking lot here and take a look at that because it's got a really beautiful view. Uh, but if we go back the other way, we can actually get down to the water. And um, this is the same cookie as before. This is not a new cookie. Uh, this is the same one as I was eating before. So the light is a little harsh right now, but uh, look at this. That little bridge over there, you can actually walk across that. There's a little way down at the edge of the parking lot here, and you can just walk right on top of that. Uh, it's not as scary to do that as it looks from here. It's kind of a cool place to walk, but I think we're gonna go across the parking lot and over to the other side. So there are a few ways down here on this cliff because it's not very high up here on this side. And where are we here? There's an easy way and then there are a few not quite so easy ways. I think this one will do. With all the recent rains, these uh, little trails have really gotten washed out. They used to be even easier to walk down. Quite a bit of erosion here. Still not bad. The first couple of times I came down here to this spot, I parked up there and uh, just stood up there with everybody else and not realizing that you could really get down near the water um, until I saw a couple of fishermen come down and they walked right down uh, it's not the easiest thing to walk down here. It's a bunch of jagged rocks and it does get a little slippery in spots. So you kind of have to be really careful, take your time and be careful. But uh, there are a couple of ways that you can get down right to the water. And you do really need to be mindful of uh, the tide uh, and the waves because I uh, was way down there one time doing some uh, recording, recording the waves, you know, right up close, getting some really good sound. It was just awesome. And uh, then I just got drenched by a big, huge wave that came up. Um, it was pretty funny. I wasn't upset. Uh, it was summertime, so I uh, I was happy to have the, uh, the cool water wash over me. But I don't want to get wet today. So we should probably just mention that uh, to be safe, we want to just make sure that we don't get too close to the edge. Quite a few people uh, have uh, had some issues out here. Uh, of course, the water does erode under the edge of the cliff base here, so it's hard to tell what's solid and not. I'm actually back off several feet from the cliff, so it looks like I'm really right up on it at the moment, but I'm, I'm actually not I'm in a safe spot. Just something to keep in mind. The wind does pick up at times too, so that can uh, kind of knock you over uh, occasionally. There's another spot, I need to find it. I think it's just over ahead a little ways. 
really cool spot if we can find it here. Yeah, this is a spot I was looking for. This one's not nearly as easy to climb down. Uh, pretty slippery in spots, but it's definitely worth it once we get over to this little area. On stormy days, the spot is even more awesome. The water just gets splashed way up high and uh, it's just really fun to watch. Uh, water's fairly calm, believe it or not, uh, for this area. Uh, when I was here in January, it was pretty stormy and so the waves are really rolling and uh, I was having a great time just watching them and watching them. I recorded quite a bit, but uh, audio wasn't great because it was windy too, so uh, I don't have much to show for that day, but uh, I do remember it and will probably always remember it. Uh, why I always like to come back here. I'm not quite so tired at the moment. Do you think it was the cookie, that one single cookie I ate? Or do you think it has something to do with the waves here giving me a little energy? It's one or the other. Maybe both. Maybe if I ate two or three cookies too, I'd probably have a little more energy too, but you know I only ate the one. I sure hope that you can see what I'm seeing here and uh, you can tell just why I am so enamored of this place. Uh, most beautiful place I've ever been. Uh, my favorite place I've ever been. The combination of the ocean and these cliffs, the color of the water, and then you've got the redwood trees and there's a bunch of other uh, trees that you can only find around this area. It's just an incredible place. Uh, there's been a couple of places that have come close to being my favorites, uh, but this seems to be the most perfect of all the places I've been. Some places uh, I've been, the weather's not so great all year round, and so that kind of knocks it down a little bit for me. If it's, uh, if it's a place I can't be in the wintertime, then how great is it exactly? Uh, I could winter here in, uh, in Mendocino County, but um, this year I was glad that I wasn't here uh, back in January and February because uh, it got pretty cold. Probably not the best place for me to be. Uh, I don't like it when it's super cold, but uh, yeah, that's just my thoughts explaining a little bit of, about why I really like it here and uh, why I wish I could just stay here more. But now I'm getting tired, so best to head back to the van. Maybe I will make that coffee now. Be a nice thing if I could just uh, wait for the sunset. But we'll see if I have enough energy for that. Okay, I got the kettle on and I forgot that I have some new coffee to open. I bought a bag at a kind of odd place for me. Uh, it was a Home Goods slash uh, TJ Maxx store. It was an enormous store. It just was massive. Uh, they had lots and lots of stuff in there. Bigger selection than normal uh, because of the two stores combined. But they had coffee in there that I've tried before, uh, Common Voice Coffee. And I've tried this coffee before. I liked the one I had before. I don't remember exactly the the uh, variety that I bought before. It may have been this one. I, I just don't remember. It's been a while. Uh, this is normally very expensive coffee, and so I normally just pass this up. But not only was it in a discount store, but it was on the discount shelf. So $6. Now, I did go next door to uh, a Sprouts, and they had the same coffee for uh, $17 for this bag. So apparently that's a good deal. I'd already bought it, so I was happy to see that I got a good deal on it. I figured it was a pretty good deal, but um, we're gonna open it up here. I'm always excited about opening up a new bag of coffee and tasting it. These look like very fancy coffee beans. They are uh, very tiny, very tiny, and that 
usually means that they're a uh, specialty variety of coffee. They are definitely a light roast. I'm happy to see that. Uh, I just really don't care for a medium or dark roast at all, and I'm always a little bit disappointed when I get something that is not a true light roast. So I'm happy to see that the roast level is accurate. I have my limits as to uh, how light of a roast I like. Um, this is probably right on the edge, so this will be interesting to give this a try. Okay, so probably good coffee. I'm saying probably, um, mostly based on my last experience with this company and the one I had. Uh, this is definitely stale coffee. This is why I don't normally buy coffee from a, uh, from a discount store. It's been sitting on the shelf for quite a while and freshness really is key with coffee. So this coffee's lost a little bit. Um, it's actually lost quite a bit uh, in flavor just sitting around. Um, it's a shame. It's just stale coffee and this is why you really should buy coffee that is uh, from a store that has high turnover so that you know you're getting a fresher bag of coffee. I'm going to drink it because I bought it and six dollars is not uh, an inexpensive price to pay for a bag of coffee either so I'll force myself to uh, to just work through this. Well, the sun is starting to go down, which means it is getting to be chilly, so I'm going to need to swap this uh, rain jacket out for something heavier. This rain jacket worked really good today for a jacket. It was just perfect. Uh, probably because I was inside most of the time, driving with my heat on. Had my heat on my feet most of the drive, too, uh, trying to keep my toes warm. My toes are actually still warm at the moment, so... Gotta switch over to the down jacket so I keep my toes warm. And you know what? I think I said earlier that there were no uh, clouds out tonight. There, there are clouds. There are clouds. So we'll see what the sunset's gonna look like. Let's go walk out and see if we uh, can find a good place to set up to watch the sunset, uh, if there is a sunset. Uh, let's get a pretty view either way. Well, we didn't end up having a nice sunset, but uh, I am still feeling rather invigorated at the moment. Maybe it's because of the brisk air. Uh, maybe it's because of the uh, energizing surf here. But uh, I am probably going to crash very soon. Uh, I am pretty tired, I think, so I think I'm going to end this here and head into town and find a place to park for the night. I may not even make dinner. I think I may just go to bed straight away tonight. Uh, hey, uh, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it.